well, let's climb a little higher from these UAVs and drones we've been talking about. Uh, climb a little higher into space, and we'll talk about some space satellites that are being used by the University of Michigan to detect microplastics in the ocean. Um, basically, the problem here that they're trying to solve is that 8 million tons of microplastics enter the ocean every single year. This is pollution from land, and it's being polluted out into the ocean, and these little bits of plastic can harm the ecosystem, they can harm us, and they're actually really, really difficult to track and to clean up. So I think we talked about microplastics when uh, it was a topic coming out of MIT about recycling polyethylenes. And if I remember correctly, the average human consumes about five grams of microplastics every two weeks, yeah. which is about a credit card's worth. And if you're yeah. drinking out of plastic bottles, it's twice that amount. So it's it's a, a little scary how much plastic we consume. Um, and it's shown to have, you know, marginally negative benefit or marginally negative effects on human health. But what's even more tragic is the effect that these microplastics have in the health of the ocean. So a lot of fish eat them and they die. It can't pass through their digestive system. It also messes a lot with the, you know, the ecology of the plants. It blocks light. And there's also a lot of surfactant pollutants that go up on the surface. So like imagine all these bits of plastic, there's probably oils that are breaking down from them and that are co covering like a sheen on the surface of the ocean. Long story short, these microplastics are terrible for the environment. They're also bad for us, and they're terrible for all the animals and fish that live in the ocean. Um, and right now, we don't have a great way of tracking them. So the only way we've been able to track them so far is basically if there's like a fisherman out there with a net um, that collects a lot of plastic in their net, they're supposed to report it. So we know like gotcha. with a little blip at one point in time in one location, there was a lot of plastic in this one fisherman's catch. That's but you can't see patterns and how... Okay. Yeah, not really a high-tech solution to this very important problem. Um, so what this team from the University of Michigan did was repurpose an old decommissioned NASA satellite system called Cygnus, which was intended originally for helping with hurricane forecasting. And they were able to figure out a little nuance in this hurricane forecasting satellite system that allowed them to detect where mi microplastics are underwater in the ocean. Wait, so what do you mean by nu nuance? So this is really, really fascinating to me. It's my favorite part, maybe, of this whole episode. Um, this Cygnus system, which had eight satellites that hover around the Earth, and they were meant to measure the roughness of the surface of the ocean, which basically okay. they were able to correlate that with wave speed, it make, or with wind speed. It makes sense. That makes sense. When the wind is blowing really hard, it creates bigger waves in the ocean that can be measured by the satellite. Right. Well, what they found is that over the years, these measurements have become less and less accurate. So, you know, if you have someone sitting there in the middle of the ocean measuring the wind speed, it was actually measuring a lot higher in certain areas than the satellite could detect. And what that means is, even though the wind was high, the water was actually relatively smooth compared to what it should be. And what they found is that those smooth areas are actually where there's high concentrations of microplastics. And that's because there's plastics oh. all in the waves that are making them more viscous so they don't rise as much. And there's also, like I was saying, those surfactants, the oils that rise up and are a sheen right. on the surface of the water. Basically, all those combine to reduce the wave height and a certain wind speed um, in a given area. So what they found is these... An anomalous areas that made it really hard for them to use their hurricane satellite actually helped them predict where microplastics were located in the ocean. And they actually had fishermen go out there net and confirm that, yes, these are high microplastic areas. So Dude, that's really, really interesting. This is so interesting because you're taking a satellite that's no longer used. There's like more advanced satellites doing what it was doing. And they found this inaccuracy through investigating, they found out that they can now repurpose, like essentially upcycle a satellite. Yeah, and it's already that in space, so it's already operating, it's perfect. And it actually reminds me of episode four, we talked about the Sentinel-6 weather satellite that measured more than just You're wave right. height to detect weather patterns because there are things like plastics in the ocean that are messing up with the forecasting that we used to rely on only wave height. Um, microplastics are messing it up, but they're able to use this old decommissioned satellite um, to do me microplastics measurement. And they've been able to do some pretty cool things with it. They've been able to confirm the sources and travel of microplastics pollution. So for a long time, we've predicted that the Yangtze River in China, just by Shanghai, is a 
you know, large source of a lot of the microplastics that make it out into the Pacific Ocean. We've never been able to confirm it, except without blips from these fishermen, but using the Cygnus satellite, they've been able to show multiple spikes of microplastics enter the ocean um, right there by Shanghai, coming down the Yangtze River. So, um, you know, that proves that somewhere along that river, someone's dumping plastic into the ocean that's, you know, making it out and polluting you know, the whole ecosystem out there. We've also watched the seasonal change of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which is like this giant uh, island of garbage out in the ocean. It actually increases and decreases inside with the size with the seasons. We didn't know that before, but we do now thanks wow. to re- repurposing this old decommissioned NASA satellite. Well, hopefully with, now that we have this localized data of where microplastics are, it can lead to policy changes or just any action. Well, that's spread. the hope, is these researchers, they don't know what's next, but they do care a lot about the environment, and they're happy that they're able to basically upcycle, like you said, this old satellite in space. But what they really hope for, and this is a quote straight from what they said, they hope for, quote, a fundamental change in how we track and manage microplastic pollution because we need to get rid of it. So I love it. That's awesome, man. Yeah.